character design. So I've been studying character design for a few years at this point, and have used that knowledge to improve my art and create my own characters. At some point, I'd really like to go into specific characters I've designed, and even go into depth on certain topics in character design. But first, I would really just like to share the fundamentals of character design, so if anyone wants to get into it, or just if you want to understand future videos better. So that's what I'm going to do today. So the main fundamentals of character design are silhouette, shape language, color language, exaggeration, posing, costuming, and appeal. And this video is just going to be a basic rundown of all these topics, so you can better understand character design. We'll start with silhouette. The silhouette of a character contributes to how recognizable they are, because if you can recognize a character without their colors and features, then you'll definitely be able to recognize them with colors and features. Every famous or iconic cartoon character has a recognizable silhouette, and even live action or more realistic media needs its characters to have good silhouettes. It's important for characters to have a recognizable silhouette without any interesting clothes or posing, but those things can definitely help the silhouette. And more importantly, say a lot about the character. How a character poses can say a lot about their personality or how they feel in the moment. Like this picture of Ford, which is usually the first thing to pop up when you google Stanford Pines. This pose shows that he's confident and adventurous. Also, the scene where this pose is from is actually when he was just nerding out about dungeons, dungeons, and more dungeons, which I think is pretty funny. Costuming is also very important in showing both a character's personality and what they are doing in a present scene. Historically, cartoons have been known to only have one outfit per character, but modern cartoons have actually been changing the outfits up a little bit. One such cartoon is The Owl House, which I still haven't watched anything past Hollow Mine, so don't leave spoilers in the comments. Anyways, uh, Luz, for example, has her regular outfit that she wears most of the time. It's casual and colorful, and it kind of looks like the ace flag. But she eventually does get a school uniform and a few other outfits that usually have purple or blue in them, which go really well with the rest of her color palette. And that leads us right into color palette. A character's colors, again, need to say something about the character, but also look good together. You need to have the right amount of contrast and take things like hue and saturation into consideration. A good example of color language is Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony. My Little Pony characters tend to have similar silhouettes, so a lot of the designs tend to rely more heavily on color language. Twilight's main color is purple, which is associated with royalty, and she does become a princess at the end of season 3. Spoilers from, like, what, 2012? But purple also is symbolic of magic, passion, and wisdom, which are all things that are very important to her character. She also has a bit of pink in her color palette, likely to symbolize love, femininity, and friendship. Something else that can say a lot about a character is shape language. There are many, many shapes in this world, but the most common ones using character design are circles, triangles, and squares, and each of these shapes evoke different feels. Wait, no, not that kind of feels. Get that out of here. I don't want to cry today. Anyways, round shapes like circles are bouncy, cute, and soft, like Baymax from Big Hero 6, who is kind and very squishy. And of course we all know who my example will be for triangular shape language. I already have the summoning circle ready. Triangles are used for a lot of villains and more chaotic characters because they feel sharp, unstable, quick, chaotic, and cunning. They're also heavily connected to the Eye of Providence, making them feel mysterious or malicious. Meanwhile, squares feel sturdy, stubborn, protective, and strong. A character that usually uses a lot of square shape language is Optimus Prime. Optimus is a very strong and heroic character, and uses square shape language in almost every iteration of Transformers. Except for this one. I could honestly make a whole video about why the Vaverse designs are bad, but essentially, too complex, not enough color. They're also just generally unappealing, which leads me into my next point. Appeal. Appeal is an incredibly subjective part of character design, but also incredibly important. A character can be attractive or cute, but those aren't the only things that can make a character design appealing. Just because fan artists try to make everything sexy doesn't mean you have to. A lot of really appealing, but conventionally ugly or disturbing character designs actually come from the Walton Files. The series has really good and appealing character designs, although they are crudely drawn and terrifying. They're really interesting and unique. There are areas that could be improved, but the designs help to tell the story. Exaggeration is also very important in aiding the story, and also plays into everything I've already talked about. Everything that you will ever draw has a real-life inspiration. 
in animation, and specifically in cartoonish art styles like, like the one that I draw in, many aspects of those inspirations are simplified or exaggerated. In a cartoon like Gravity Falls, the features of people are exaggerated to portray things about who they are. In My Little Pony, most characters share similar bases, but their colors vary wildly. There are s certain exaggeration techniques that are widely used to make characters more appealing, like big eyes and heads, or characters' legs being wider at the bottom. And people exaggerate their characters in certain ways that are unique to them, or that they picked up from other artists. For example, I picked up the way I draw feet from Let Me Explain the Studios, which I've actually mentioned before in this video. So yeah, those are kind of the basic fundamentals of character designs. I wanted to have this video to explain certain things that I'll bring up in future videos, because I do really like talking about character design and want to make videos that go in depth about certain aspects of character design, talk about specific characters or franchise, or just talk about ways I design my characters. So keep a lookout for those kinds of videos or any other videos that I put up. Until then, here's some other videos that I made that you might enjoy.